Um, a lot of you probably use YubiKeys for the two-factor authentication, right? Uh, well, I have bad news for you. It's not as secure as you might think. What the fuck, right? Um, our next speaker, Sergey, will show how he could exploit the system and cause a lot of headaches at the Federal Agency for Information Security in Germany. Please we'll give a warm welcome to Sergey. Hello, welcome everybody. It's so nice to see many people in this heat um, struggling. <laughs> um, so uh, the talk is going to be about a solution. Uh, it's called uh, DFAC2 for whatever reason. Um, so the outline of the talk is more or less uh, just a few words about universal uh, second factor, how the solutions work and what's the idea behind it. Uh, then, what is uh, a de facto uh, solution? Just a few words about certification. I'm not an expert on it at all, but just to understand why uh, this attack is relevant, uh, we'll have to look at it. And uh, talk about Java cards, how they work, uh, what kind of weird stuff uh, can happen there. And finally, about the actual vulnerability, uh, which I found in under 30 minutes, looking at the source code. So this talk will take longer than finding an actual issue in the code. Uh, so uh, universal uh, second factor um, uh, authenticators. So the idea is to move from passwords only and you have a dedicated device, just like YubiKey. There's many other solutions as well. YubiKey probably the most popular one. Um, and uh, it protects you from phishing. It protects you from uh, some uh, uh, types of malware. And uh, the idea is you have a separate device. It has a key inside and uh, cryptographically signed challenges from the remote server sent to the device and back to the uh, backend, so they can authenticate that not only your password is correct, but that also the uh, device signed this um, action. So there are a bunch of different solutions, as I mentioned. Uh, you can see here uh, quite a few of them. Uh, they can look different, but the idea is very similar behind them. Um, so what is uh, de facto? Uh, one day I was just uh, going through Twitter uh, stuff and I've seen a bunch of popular uh, Java card projects on GitHub. You see, uh, maybe not that popular, 16 stars, but uh, something. And uh, I've done quite a bit of Java card research, so I was uh, kind of interested to take a look at it. Just for no reason, it was my hobby uh, project uh, unrelated to work. But um, when I opened it, it was uh, kind of interesting because I didn't first uh, time paid attention to who is the uh, owner of this wrapper, but I just looked at the code, start to scroll through. I've seen there is a CC folder, which stands for common criteria, and uh, turns out it is actual official repository of uh, Bureau of Informatics of Germany. And uh, I googled a little bit what this solution is. Is it like uh, some test uh, wrapper or something? And turns out they advertise it as one of the solutions which can possibly help you to protect your passwords. So I thought it uh, can be nice uh, to take a look at it. And uh, interestingly enough, unlike many other uh, repositories on GitHub, this one has some uh, certificates next to it. And not often you see that. Um, so this one is a common criteria uh, certificate for this particular uh, product. They released it all on GitHub, some documentation and uh, all the code, which is normally not the case for any certified product. And we'll see why later, just for, from certification points. And they have this nice certificates, which says that uh, BSI has the uh, certified uh, FIDO product. So I thought it's nice uh, to take a look at it. I read the readme. It says uh, that this is not an actual product they want to release, not something they're going to sell to anybody. They're not in the market of making tools. But this is more like a reference implementation, just for other people to be inspired, to show how it can be done, and also how the certification of such a solution can be done. So what is uh, CC certification, common criteria certification? Um, and it's uh, especially fun to present it here at CCC because uh, yeah, it's uh, very formal for such an informal uh, group of people. But uh, it is, um, the idea is quite simple. 
you, uh, the vendor wants to certify it for whatever reasons. Sometimes it's market requirements, sometimes it's just for marketing purposes or any other reason. They have some kind of uh, target device. Uh, they design the way it should be used, the user guidance. Uh, they define the scope and uh, they say, this sort of attacker we want to protect against, and these are our security features, the SFRs. They go to independent lab and say, hey, we have this product. Can you uh, verify that it works the way we are stating it works? And there's various testing, um, not necessarily only technical. There's also a lot of documentation review and stuff. And finally, the lab presents the results to certifier. And they say, you get this certificate. And uh, the job is done. There's also different levels. It's starting from uh, 1 to 7. So there's quite a bit of uh, uh, difference there. Um, most of uh, solutions, like your payment cards, they are level 5, and that's apparently enough to make sure that your bank card is secure against um, all kinds of attackers. So, going back to the uh, repository, there is a security target document. It has all kinds of uh, the actual security features which this product has. And one of them is user presence. And this is also in the standard for FIDO. User presence uh, ensures that the user of the FIDO token actually physically approves a transaction. So it cannot be done by software. It has to be a user just pushing the button. Or doing some action which physically ensures that this is done. And if we go back to the picture, if you possibly can see it, there's red circles. Every single solution I found has a button on it. Even this tiny one on the right uh, top, it's a capacitive uh, sensor, which just uh, reads the user button push. If you've seen smart card before, usually smart cards don't have buttons. And that's a bit of a problem, because you have one user physically approve the action, but there is nothing to push on a smart card. There are some solutions which have, normally they don't have buttons. So how did they do it? There is some code which nobody will be able to read, so I'll uh, try to uh, tell you a little bit. Um, it is Java card code. It is similar to Java. It's a subset. Not all of the things are fully there. But um, there is one interesting feature uh, of uh, Java card code. So normally, all your stuff, all your variables are in flash. They are persistent. And if you want to have uh, a volatile uh, memory use, uh, like variable in RAM, you make an array. You call an API to make transient array. That's the second part in the code. And this variable here is called scratch persistent. So what they do is they have an array of one uh, byte, which initially, when you boot up the card, the value is initialized to 0. And it's in RAM. So when the card is powered and uh, it runs, the value starts with uh, 0. And when they execute any sensitive transaction, if you can possibly read in the bottom one, when it goes through the sensitive uh, path, uh, for example, you want to sign a transaction then, or uh, enroll uh, the new uh, website, then the value is set to 1. And when they set the value to 1, it never goes programmatically to 0. So you have to power off the card and power it on again. So the idea is the user would have a smart card reader. They have a card uh, which has the solution on it. You physically, every time, have to plug in the card in the reader when you sign. And if you want to sign again, you pull it out, pull it back in in the reader. And that's how you physically show that it's uh, you're approving the transaction. So just to replace the button. And this is done with a bit of uh, magic from Java card. So, so far, so good. The cycle, how it should work, more or less uh, like this. So you have you plug in the card. You're in this state when the user presence is 0. That's the default value. And then you execute any sensitive operation. The code sets it to 1. You stay in 1. And you have to pull the card out, pull it back in. And then it goes back to 0 because the RAM is reset because you power down. So all of this makes sense, um, I guess. If you uh, don't look too much into Java card standard, Unfortunately, I've made too many wrong decisions to spend a lot of days reading it. So uh, at that moment, I already thought something is wrong. Um, so I made a little demo. Um, let me see if it works. So anything's happening? Oh no! 
Okay, now, okay. So this is a bit of application. I made a different script in, uh, initially just for testing. Uh, then I made a GUI application for this time, hoping that I can show it on the screen. So it's quite simple. It's like what kind of application basically would do it. So you have an open uh, smart card uh, button just to connect to the card. In the uh, back you can see there is, uh, it sends data to the card and it checks uh, user presence here and it just shows for us. And we can do sign and it signs the transaction, the value goes to one, user presence is zero now. And uh, when you pull out the card now in a second, uh, oh no, first I try to sign again and it's denied because the value is zero. And uh, when I will pull a card in a second, yeah, there's an exception which I didn't handle, uh, but uh, then user present goes back to one. And that's how it works. So I just tested it with my card. I didn't have the same one as BSI because they certified to a specific product, but I didn't really care about that because I wanted to take a look at uh, the standard. And uh, it is already quite interesting. So this is one of the field which defines how you uh, create this transient byte array, this uh, variable in RAM, and the flag you give it to it is clear on reset. And you can see here at the end it says the value uh, is reset, or, or the, var the value is cleared on reset or power on. So there's already two possible states. It's not necessarily uh, when you uh, plug in the card out or in, but if we can somehow programmatically reset the card, we can achieve the same behavior. So that's what I started to test uh, right away. And you can see here, it's already an interesting behavior. When I just open the smart card, just connect to it uh, over the driver, the LED on the bottom changes. So when it's open, it is a solid green. And uh, when it's closed, it's blinking. So only programmatically just opening the driver already has effects on the reader. So I was wondering, uh, what about the card? Is the part, a card going to be powered as well uh, every time we open and close driver or not? And that is quite simple. So a smart card has only eight pads, not even all of them I used. And what I care is a VCC. I just need to check uh, the power on one of the lines when I open the driver uh, programmatically and close. And uh, that was my demo test, doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, and that's the line. So you can see here, first I uh, it's the VCC line, the power of the smart card. Uh, first, when I open it, uh, it goes up. Then I, when I close and open again, it goes down again and up. And when I close the whole application, it goes fully down. So the power is controlled programmatically from our, it's my Python script, but can be anything. Your browser eventually is going to use the driver as well. So every time you connect to the driver, it will power the card. And when you disconnect, it will power down. And now the problem is that the life cycle, which they expected to be two simple circles, is a bit different. So now we can as well just plug in the card and approve transaction by um, removing it and putting the card back in. Or we can just programmatically open and close device. And it achieves exactly the same uh, result. As you can see here, with the same application, I uh, sign, I close the device, I open, I don't even touch the reader. The present changes to one, and I sign again. And I can infinitely sign as many transactions as I want. And as you remember, it, it maybe not uh, doesn't look like a big deal, but uh, for uh, these sort of products, when you certify and you say this is your security feature, and you say user presence has to be physically uh, protected uh, with the implementation, it is um, not exactly the way it's supposed to be. So how these attacks are measured. So normally for your uh, web uh, vulnerabilities or anything else, you have CVS uh, score. So here you have jill rating. It's kind of the same idea, but a bit different. So you just count what kind of equipment the attacker needs to identify the uh, vulnerability and what they need to exploit it, how much time they need, what kind of expertise, uh, and so on. And eventually, you want to reach some nice number which is uh, secure enough. And if it's lower than that, it is uh, failing the test, pretty much. So uh, it took me less than an hour to find the issue. So you can see here, um, identification uh, uh, time is less than one day. So it's zero points. And altogether, all of them end up to be 
nine, and this is very low for an attack. Like uh, there should be no such an attack which is possible to execute on one of the features in this time. So. I reported all this uh, to BSI uh, through their disclosure uh, program. Uh, they facilitate disclosure to third parties and they also handle this case uh, very nicely, or quick to respond. And um, they issued the fix. And uh, this is the best part of open source, which I like a lot when I report vulnerabilities to vendors. When it's open source, it's nice to see also the effects of uh, what you've done, what, uh, how they uh, fix the vulnerability. Um, so you can see here. Uh, that's the, as far as I remember, the security target. It was uh, talking about user presence. This is one of the changes in the document. It was saying that uh, before proof of presence uh, means that uh, a button or physically placing a token to the NFC reader uh, enables user presence. With a fix, it says um, that the card cannot really detect that. And uh, so the user must keep his system secure that the host PC or the smartphone is free of malware and uh, under full control of the uh, user. Um, and they issued this document. <laughs> the title is Assurance Continuity Maintenance Report. And um, in there, there is... Uh, Pretty much also part of the process. That's what happens to every vendor. If somebody found an issue in their certified product and they want to keep their certification, they have to assess the risk, figure out what they do with it, uh, address it. And it says here, the vendor of uh, the de facto uh, authentication applet, BSI, submitted impact analysis report to BSI for approval. And um, so on. And finally, the certified product did not change. The security tar target was editorially updated. So. Uh, that was the fix. Um, maybe not what I expect, uh, to be honest, but um, uh, this is uh, part of the deal, I guess. Um, the conclusions, uh, my talk was very fast, surprisingly. Um, the conclusions are simple. Uh, there are still no buttons on the smart card. So unless you have a special dedicated hardware, there is no easy trick you can use to implement a button, as far as I know. In the initial note, uh, BSI had um, in the readme of the whole project. Uh, at the end, they were saying that they want to inspire other people to do uh, certification projects, but it might uh, prove the process to be a tough challenge. And I think it was proven to be uh, exactly that. It's not easy to make something secure, and uh, especially when it has to be to the uh, very high level. And uh, the last one, um, I really enjoyed that they released it because there is so little projects you can see certified and uh, public, and so many of them probably still also have issues, but just never known to public. And it is nice that they released it, and then we can take a look at it and see what kind of issues they also have and how they can be uh, possibly handled. So it's really nice to have it open source and nice to find issues in open source. And uh, I enjoyed it myself a lot. And hope you enjoyed this talk. And if you have questions, we have a lot of time. Thank you very much, Sergey. Um, yes, indeed, we have a lot of time for questions. Um, I see one over there. One with the white shirt, number one. Thank you. Thank you for the talk. In the previous slide, did I read it correct that the fender asked the BSI for approval? Who was the fender again? Uh, from what I read, vendor, uh, and from the certificate itself, it says vendor is BSI, that they, they developed it, and... Uh, okay, so the BSI submitted to the BSI for approval. It seems to be the case. Glorious, thank you. <laughs> Another question to people over, yes? You need to press it, okay. Do you think, uh, since you're an expert on Java cards, <laughs> is there a technical solution to this uh, problem that they found, <laughs> that you found? Uh, um, For example, store the user presence in flash instead of in transient memory? No, uh, well, uh, that's why when I started to look at it, initially I thought it's in flash, but then I just misunderstood how it works. The thing is, if you keep it in flash, then you still need to somehow detect the act of the card being disconnected, and there is no way for the card to distinguish it. And this is the only possible source of a physical action for the card. Like, there is nothing else you can physically do to a card which it can detect. So, 
whatever you do, you cannot really indicate to the card you are uh, pulling it out of the reader without just checking if it's powered or not. So I don't think there is any other way. There are some solutions with uh, buttons. They maybe have multiple, not just a secure element, but uh, external MCU in one package and everything. Uh, but uh, for normal uh, smart cards like this, it's just the reader and uh, plastic, maybe also NFC uh, antenna, but that's it. Like, so there is no actual way I can see myself. OK, thank you. Any more questions? Yes, Victor. You. Hi, thank you for the talk. Um, so it seems like the solution they propose is that the user system has to be free of malware, which means that the vendor must make sure that the user system is free of malware, which sounds like they need to rely on some form of trusted computing. So everyone who's running a free operating system will be out. Um, yeah, so one of the things for the products is that there is the product itself and all the rest. So of course, when certified product cannot uh, expect to, you know, for the system to be uh, anything in particular. But um, yeah, it's uh, hard to say how it can be enforced technically. But it's also certification to be a big part of it is somewhat like insurance. So it's not necessarily always solve the issue, but it just somehow puts the boundaries on things. So they don't necessarily always make technical sense fully. But it's just the way it plays out for <laughs> if it's a good thing or not. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't know, but uh, that's the way it works. All right, next question, yes. Hello, um, what would be the typical attack? So someone leaves the card on the reader and then you have some malware which just glitches the driver and then you can sign anything without that the user presented it or. Yeah, yeah. So it would look something like this. Uh, the idea is it should not be possible remotely for any software or uh, even hardware, given its uh, rating uh, for the uh, certification level. Like a lot of things can be scoped. Like even your reader cannot be fully trusted because you just bought something from eBay uh, from China, and then you can you really trust that reader? Of course, it's difficult to imagine the attack for that case. But uh, even those things cannot always be uh, considered. Uh, uh, benevolent, but um, yes, so it would be something like this. You have uh, your card plugged in, you just didn't remove it right away. Even if you do, like it's going to be microseconds for, to do execute multiple uh, transactions. So for a user, there is no physical way to just really put the card in, sign your transaction, pull it out very quickly so uh, no other malware can sign another uh, action. So uh, it's indeed something like that. Um, I've uh, read something about smart cards with a fingerprint reader on it. Uh, have you experience with that? Yeah, they also exist, um, and it would be uh, possibly uh, one of the ways. So uh, the thing is, when the product is certified here, somewhere in the slide, if we go all the way back, yeah, you cannot possibly see that, but uh, I can tell you. There is, um, in the certificate, it al also states the operating system on which this applet runs, so the applet is just the software, and uh, they got another certified smart card platform, like the actual physical hardware. And for this particular platform, it only works. So it cannot work on any random piece of hardware. Like Technically, this is, of course, not certified because I run my applet on it because this is a different platform. But um, uh, the point is uh, they could use some other solution, but maybe for the reason of price or just complexity of the solution, it becomes uh, more difficult. That's why they didn't use it. All right, one more question there in, in the back. Is it on? No. Is it too far away? No. Am I done? No, it's not. Did I have right. Is that far away? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this may be slightly off topic, but how did you dump the Java software from the card to reverse it? Uh, I did not. Uh, it is all open source in the repository. You can still see this. They put the whole applet. They put all the documents uh, and stuff. So all of it was open source. As they wanted to make a reference implementation, it makes sense to release it, of course. Yeah, if you would have to dump it, it's a non-trivial task at all. And they never released it as a solution, so it was just a reference implementation. All right. Any more questions? Yes. Here, uh, right in the middle, with the light blue shirt. So 
I am no expert in smart I am no expert in smart cards, but wouldn't you typically also need some kind of pin to use the material on the card? With YubiKeys, which also act like smart cards, uh, you need a pin. Uh, this solution does not have the pin as far as I remember. Uh, I would need to check the code as well, but uh, as far as I remember, not. It's not needed. Thank you. All right, there's one in front here. In the black shirt. Hi, do you know of any uh, actual vendor who has used some, something similar to this technique uh, to uh, actually build and, and sell uh, universal two-factor uh, uh, two uh, smart cards? Is there anything on the market or is it just, just uh, this reference uh, implementation? Yeah, I, I see one fork. I wonder if it's from you because... <laughs> uh, no, uh, I don't know, to be honest. I doubt uh, somebody used it. Uh, it was released three years ago, I think, uh, but uh, I don't think it was used in production. Similar idea was uh, some companies tried to use for uh, blockchain wallets, so they thought about using smart cards, but there is a similar problem. You don't have a button, you don't have a screen, you don't really want to use it as a trusted device fully because you want to really see what you're signing. All right. Um, yeah, I'll take it as the last question now. The one the White shirt, black mask in the back. So, is this on? Application uh, of the act doesn't force the vendor to at all adhere to the original thing that was certified. So, basically, they. The LG is on. Uh, okay. Um, they basically changed the original product by specifying that you can't rely on it for the security anymore. And uh, just like that, they keep the certification. Don't they have to like notify their customers or anything? Yeah. Well, for this one, it's particularly difficult because uh, it's not like they have any customers from uh, what I can imagine. But uh, you can see there is uh, an official document for that reason. So it's not just changing the product. You cannot just update your uh, software. Like fi fixing bugs becomes a problem when your product is certified because you know it's an issue. But the moment you change the code, it's not the same solution. So it's not necessarily certified. But uh, this is an official document, the uh, Assurance Continuity Maintenance Report, which addresses the issue. Um, yeah, but how it addresses is a different question. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Let's give it up for Sergey again. Thank you for being here. Stay hydrated and have a nice camp.